back to Sarah's computer sessions. Today I will be starting off with uh, data types. So since I am taking data types in detail, uh, data types will be uh, continued maybe up to two to three videos. So please bear with me. Uh, usually in colleges we don't take um, give such detailings in data types but then when students start doing programs in labs uh, you know they tend to get confused about why they have actually studied data types so I don't want that to happen to those viewers who really want to study data types um, with me okay so so let's move on to the video and start data types today okay in my last video part 5 I had taken data variable and keyword okay, while I was explaining about data I had given an example for alphabetical or character data I hope you remember this example I was as I was reviewing my video excuse me I felt that this example needs a bit more detailed explanation see i have given four examples that depict the character data a r a phrase this is good and a number 124 clearly these are character data but the last two examples are a bit different right they come under a bit more broader classification of character data and they are called as strings I had not mentioned this word string in my last video and I felt at least some of you might have had some doubts on that so whenever we group collection of data and call it as a character data they are actually strings okay so when we group a collection we should use double quotation marks while when we are using only a single character we can use single quotation marks okay now we'll move on to today's session and it is data type i'm just starting data types i will be taking data types in a very detailed method and so um, there will be two to three videos that will comprise of only data types please bear with me okay so let's start data types if I have to explain the significance of data types clearly, I have to take some of the points from my last video about data and variables. Okay, so let me um, just brush up what I had told about data and variables in my last video. Yes, I had told that whatever we input for uh, solving a program or solving a problem inside a program or using a program we call it as data and i had told that there are different uh, categories of data like numeric data character data logical data etc and um, then i explained about variables and i was uh, telling that uh, variables are used as um, containers that hold a da data whatever we input as data should be uh, you know saved in memory in order for uh, the operating system or compiler to use that data while uh, the program is getting executed so it should be the data should be there in memory so in order for saving the data in memory we use variables and it is much easier to remember variable names rather remembering memory addresses and then i explained about the different attributes of uh, variable and um, I had explained that a variable can have three attributes and they are data type, variable name and its value. And I had told that while variable is being mentioned, uh, uh, variable is being used inside the program, the variable should be mentioned at the start of the program. Whatever variables are being used in a program, though all those variables should be mentioned at the start of the program. And this mentioning process is called as variable declaration yes so um, let me start from this point of variable declaration you have to declare variables whatsoever so when you are declaring variables you have to specify the type of the data the variable holds along with the variable declaration okay so the data type appears as the prefix uh, for the variable name 
So why should we actually mention the data type in variable declaration or when we are mentioning variables inside the program at the start of the program? That let's look into uh, why actually we mention data types. So data type actually determines the range of values that the variable can hold. Also, the amount of memory allocated to a variable differs according to a data type. So suppose we are entering a numerical data and we are entering a character data. Okay, we need, suppose we need two different datas for a program and we are entering both of them. One is a numerical data, another one is a character data. Okay. The amount of memory space that should be allocated to a numerical data is different from that should that which is which has to be allocated for a character data. Now, why this difference in all? Let's see it in detail, but then just understand that there is a difference. So the compiler should be notified about the type of the data that we are entering because uh, you know only if we mention the type of the data will the compiler be able to or the operating system will be able to allocate that much the amount of memory that is required for that particular type of data okay so parallel to this logic goes another logic and that is about the range of values that a variable can hold when we are saying that a variable has a type of you know a data type associated with it the significance of the data type lies in the range of values that the type of data allows now let me uh, give you an example for both the amount of memory as well as the range of values first let me give an example about the amount of memory i'll give you a real life example suppose if you are writing a letter uh, in an a4 sheet and you want to post the letter so you have to insert that letter into an envelope right in order to post it so you will be choosing an envelope that best matches the size of the folded sheet of paper you won't be choosing a larger envelope obviously you cannot you know insert a, a big letter into a small envelope you need to have a right size match for the envelope okay that matches or associates with the size of the folded sheet of paper similarly every data will be having different sizes so according to that size uh, a memory a required amount of memory should be allocated and now coming on to the range of values this is not actually a proper example but then uh, for for you to better understand what the range is all about Suppose if you are actually going to appear for an exam, uh, a national exam, and you have to apply online uh, as registration, you have to submit an online form, okay. So if you have to submit an online form, uh, certainly you have to um, enter a lot of information into the uh, form that is in front of your, in front of you, right. Uh, for providing those information to the uh, corresponding website for proper registration successful registration so examples for the input fields are the name sex date of birth your maybe education qualification your address your phone number email id and so and so so hmm, suppose if that exam has an age limit only uh, if the candidate is between 22 and 34 years of age can he uh, be uh, writing this examination or he will be eligible to write that examination if there is a protocol set like that whenever you are entering your input uh, information into the input fields provided on the website form okay whenever you are writing you are entering your date of birth a uh, uh, automatic check will be conducted whether you fall into that age limit category like that yeah, for you know in programming strategy in programming domain whenever you enter a data that data has to be checked whether it actually lies within a range of value only then can it be uh, properly fit into the memory space that will be allocated for that particular data okay now why that range of values comes and all i will be explaining further in the next video okay so the next point is this range will be different for different processor types or the processes with different speed.
Now, what do you mean by processor speed? You might have heard about like 16-bit processor, 32-bit processor, 16-bit processors, etc. Now, nowadays, most processors are 64-bit. So, uh, suppose if my machine is 64-bit, it means that at a particular instant of time, a total of 64 bits can be accessed from the memory and processed by the processor. If your machine is 32 bit, that means your machine can only access 32 bit at a particular time, at a particular instant. That means that my system, which is 64 bit, is faster than your system, which is 32 bit, right? So, depending upon the speed of the processor, the range of values for data types. Uh, can be different and actually the range uh, not really dep depends on the processor speed but it depends on other a lot of factors like operating system the storage format of the programming environment that we are using uh, etc okay so uh, but uh, when uh, we learn data types and the range of values for the data types um, in you know we usually learn these um uh, data types with respect to the processor speed or processor type okay so next i will be just mentioning what are the data types that is used in c c data types can be broadly classified into four you may be able to uh, see different types of classification some uh, say that there are only three classifications but i prefer to stick on to this kind of classification the first one is basic or primitive data type. The second one is derived data type. The third is user defined data type. And the fourth one is valueless data type. So let's see basic data type. It comprises of four different data types and they are car, int, float and double. Now these words are actually keywords that are uh, predefined inside the C vocabulary. I had explained keywords clearly in my last video. If you have not watched it, please go and watch my last video and come back to this uh, video, this slide. Okay. So, CHAR, INT, FLOAT, DOUBLE, these are all keywords and you cannot use these keywords um, otherwise for other purposes. CHAR, CAR, is that data type that uh, specifies that the data entered in the corresponding variable used with car data type is a character data. Okay. If you are using int data type along with the variable, that means the data that you will be entering into or assigning to that variable will be an integer data. Now, what is float and double? You might have heard about floating point numbers, right? I will be um, taking floating point representation as a separate session maybe later. I cannot, you know, include uh, floating point representations and floating point numbers. Details about that here in along with the videos in C programming because you may feel that I am deviating from uh, my C programming session. It's a bit more, uh, you know, uh, to be detailed topic float and double so we'll be taking it uh, some time later but please understand that float keyword is used uh, to represent floating point numbers they are just decimal numbers and double is also actually used for storing floating point numbers but with a larger range double has a larger range okay so here along with the data types when i'm you know taking data types I will be going in detail into the first two basic data types and they are char and int. Doesn't mean that I will not take float and double. I will be mentioning the range of values but just brushing up through float and double because um, we might be, you know, using char and int more compared to float and double. Okay. So the next data type is valueless data type. It comprises of only one keyword. It's void. The meaning of void is empty. It 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 depicts emptiness. It doesn't it will not be able to store any value. But when you are using data type void along with something, a certain amount of memory will be allocated. Now you might be thinking why then there's a data type like this. 
I will be explaining void when I will be taking functions and pointers because um, void um, comes appears along with functions and pointers. Okay. Now next we move on to derived data type. Inside derived data types we have array, function, and pointer. Now these three are actually derived from basic data type and that is why they come under derived data type. We'll be explaining this in uh, my future videos. Mm. The next data type is user defined data type. Users can actually create data types. That also we will be taking in detail later. But these data type, the user defined data type comprises of three data types and they are structure, union and enumeration. Hello. Okay, we have started our data types today. I know that uh, today's session uh, did not have that much content within it. But then whatever I have told you, uh, I have uh, explained today is very much important because, you know, we use data types in all the programs that we write. And um, uh, since I am continuing data types for maybe two to three videos, upcoming videos, uh, you have to stay connected, you have to, uh, you know, be in touch with the subject. So, please continue watching and when you are watching the next video that I am going to upload, uh, you have to have a proper understanding about whatever I have told in this video. So, uh, I hope that you will be with me. If you have any doubts, if you have, if you need any help regarding uh, this subject, um, you can leave a comment or you can uh, mail me i'll be giving you the mail id and, and um, also if you have any suggestions for improvement for my improvement you can um, leave a message okay so as always please like share and subscribe to my channel so we'll be coming with the next video very soon thank you for watching god bless you